and you already clogged like uh, uh, achieved the milestone numbers yeah already so just wanted to understand how you know the uh, ondc is you know accelerating e-commerce and other you know the, the no no i'll cover what i do which is financial <laughs> services so uh, sure so is that the question yes okay um so at the one we are you know trying to dem democratize e-commerce uh, we have uh, several categories live from mobility food fashion groceries um, and you know even b2b we also like to figure out exports so while it's a slow burn to begin with uh, you know once enough participants are in place both from the inventory side and from the distribution side on the buyer apps uh, we expect this to scale significantly in the coming year uh, what is also interesting is we just went live with credit uh, about two weeks ago. So the first transactions on loans have happened. Uh, we are also soon going to uh, launch insurance, say by the end of February and by the early April we'll have investments as well. And what's most interesting is we expect, you know, e-commerce is one part but financial services pay, plays a large part in accelerating commerce. So uh, we'll be launching purchase financing both for consumer durables, for, uh, for even businesses or sole props to purchase materials. Um, and we'll also be launching insurance, so whether it's uh, transit insurance, which is called marine insurance, uh, you know, health insurance, motor insurance. So the idea is where can you embed financial services while you're doing e-commerce because eventually we all conduct commerce to make money. And then uh, can I amplify uh, my business with credit can I protect myself from economic shocks with insurance? And then once I have a surplus, where do I invest it so I can multiply it? So that's our overall strategy. So how does that uh, play this, uh, the insurance, you're launching insurance? Um, and how does that accelerate? Uh, will it uh, get into like more financial inclusion? How, how is that yeah, so affecting the customers? Yeah, so look on financial in inclusion, we think about it like on five basic pillars. Uh, so the first pillar is connectivity. So can you create APIs to connect uh, the customer to the distributor, uh, to the manufacturer of the product? So for example, you might have NBFCs who don't have a wide distribution network. You have banks who are only in certain regions, large banks and more regions, but they're not in every region. So can you provide connectivity digitally to the last mile? Same for insurance, same for investments. Now, connectivity is the first step. Connectivity provides access. Now, once I have access, is the ticket size small enough uh, for the people who are underserved to afford it? So for example, can I give a loan of 500 rupees or 1000 rupees or 2000 rupees? Uh, can I give an insurance, uh, health insurance to a daily uh, wage earner of 5 rupees instead of them having to spend 25,000 rupees, which is what they must be earning in the whole month? Can I bring mutual fund investments of 100 rupees? So today, you know, the minimum ticket size ranges from like 2000 rupees, 5000 rupees. They are 500 rupees and all, but not in all mutual funds. So can you make that uh, largely available, uh, so affordability, so reducing the ticket size makes it affordable to everyone. Then the final piece is commercial, the model. Uh, there has to be incentive for the distribution guy to distribute. So we make sure that there's a commercial model there. And then finally we also engage, um, look there are a lot of changes. So we currently digitally serve the 100 million. This has been a well uh, you know, taught, talked about story. What can we do with the policy makers and the regulators to m drive inclusion? Because we're all working towards the same thing. So we are a digital public good. We also want our measure of success is transaction, the smaller the better, and new customers who are not already in the market who adopt them. That is our benchmark of success. And I think we are aligned with all the regulators and policy makers in terms of what we're trying to do. So what can we do together to make a more conducive environment for that to happen? So that's how we think about it. So accessibility, affordability and the wider penetration. Connectivity first, Connectivity. creates access, creates afford you have to create affordability by reducing the ticket sizes, which also means the digital public goods have to be very, very cheap. Then you have to create a commercial model, so there's incentive. So everyone in the chain is making money, so there's incentive to educate and make aware you know, customers. So I'll give you a bad analogy, but if a biscuit has never been in a village, the villager doesn't know what a biscuit is. But the distributor has to make some money to educate people saying, yeah, chai khal. Right? So, so that is the same uh, principle we apply. Right? And the last is, there are regulations which, I mean, you know, the market is dynamic, regulations need to change. And we are very forward-looking regulators, so they are actually very helpful in trying to uh, create a conducive environment. So, 
uh, that all companies can prosper. And I know there's this thing that regulators restrict things. I, I think uh, that has changed substantially over the last decade. And I think we have the most forward-looking but fair regulators in the country. And I, you know, I come from digital public goods, but uh, I firmly believe that's the case. And I believe we'll see the results of that in the next 10 years. And what are your uh, few takeaways from the Bharat Fintech Summit? Um, what have you witnessed in the last two days? Oh, it's always great to see what people are doing, how things have changed. So I've always started saying that these fintech festivals have become like a family event where you meet you know, the same people, some new, some new companies, you see what's going on. You see progress from the year before to now, they also find out what new things are going on. So it's great for that. Um, and it's also like a measure of progress. And I, like, honestly, I started seeing these as family gatherings where you get to see people you haven't seen in a while. Like, you know, we all work digitally, but now you get to uh, uh, meet everyone and talk a little bit in person. Uh, and what is that one trend that will dominate 2024? I mean, I'll be prejudiced. <laughs> I'll say obviously what we are doing, but no, there's, there's too much going on in the country to say uh, any uh, single thing, I think, because look, whether it's what Aadhaar is doing, what UPI is doing and NPCI and uh, I think because in the last uh, FinTech festival they launched uh, uh, UPI enabled ATMs and uh, you know we've launched credit rails and now we're doing insurance rails and uh, investment rails. There's, there's a lot of stuff bubbling up. What I think the major mega trend will be is all these things coming together will actually accelerate financial inclusion in the country and I think uh, like it's actually we sometimes envy all the participants, you know, we are the public market makers, so to speak, because uh, I don't think it's ever been a time so ripe for everyone to build businesses, right? Where, where there's actually, uh, you know, we are like private sector people building public goods. So uh, it's a great time to start doing stuff in the fintech space. And um, I mean, I, I think we'll see the results in the next 10, 15 years. Do we ever see OMDC like going to Kyoto like the UPI? Yeah, but I mean, in all honesty, we have to make sure it works here properly first. Uh, I mean, I don't know how to say this, but we all signed up to do this for our country first. If others adopt it, great. I know there are, uh, there are efforts to do that. Uh, at least with UPI, we've been hearing what yeah. France and Singapore and all that. Um, but that's UPI is already at 10 billion plus transactions uh, a month. Uh, we are still nascent. We have to prove that it works. And look, we have, we have envisioned something that solves our problems, uh, which is including people who otherwise struggle to get included. Uh, and if other countries want to adopt that, we're happy to help. Thank you so much for talking. No worries. Thank you. Thank you.